Good morning. How are you this morning? Yes. I have some announcements, so I will try to remember all those things. <laughs> okay, first of all, as you may already know, uh, we had a, a wedding service yesterday for uh, Greg and Tammy Scott. <laughs> so yeah. uh, they got married, but uh, they wanted to invite all of you, but they couldn't this time because of yes, COVID. Uh, really strange situation right now, but they wanted to make sure uh, to let you know that they could feel your support, blessing, and presence. So they wanted to say thank you to all the church family. So friends, please keep uh, sending your uh, blessings and prayers uh, for Greg and Tammy as they begin the new chapter of their lives. So it will be appreciated if you can keep uh, remembering them and blessing them. Okay, congratulations again. Okay, and today I can see some new members. What's your name? <laughs> Dear and Donna is here. Uh, so, so glad to see you again. The Friday, two weeks ago, not this last Friday, two weeks ago, Friday was his uh, 19th birthday, which is really great. Yes. So we had a little, uh, little party at their, their house on the Saturday. So I saw them be surrounded by a lot of good family and friends. So he's really blessed. And then they are the blessing to their family and friends. So really good to see you again. Okay, thank you, dear. Thank you, Donna. Then we have new, another new member. Very super. <laughs> Yes, Alex Huber fell the other day, but uh, went through all the treatment and then a hard time, but uh, she's willing to come today. So thank you for coming, and then great to see you again. Thank you, Alice. Okay, and then, uh, I have a patient Nick. I heard that someone's birthday is today. Do you know who it is? Happy birthday, Easter. Today is your birthday, right? Yes. Yeah, so today is his birthday, so let us sing. Oh, happy birthday. Okay, last. Uh, this is just an announcement for SPRC members. So we will get together as a joint SPRC meeting this Wednesday at 6.30 at church basement. It's not about new pastor yet. <laughs> yes, we have yearly uh, assessment to we need to fill together. So for that work, for my and the church SPRC, we will get together this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at the church basement. And then, uh, yeah, there will be another meeting we will need to get together. We don't know yet, but for uh, about new pastor, so I will let you know once we know anything new about it. But uh, please keep praying for the process, for the cabinet and the new pastor who will come as our uh, next pastor. Because I heard that uh, the cabinet is working really hard because there are a lot of churches looking for new pastors because many pastors are retiring this year. So it will be appreciated if you can keep the cabinet conference in your uh, prayer. Okay, I think I'm done. So, <laughs> so I'm glad. Okay, then friends, let us worship together. We'll just stand as you are able. <coughs> Then please join me in opening prayer. So let us pray. Thank you, loving God, for bringing us to this time of worship. 
refresh us and heal us again. Remind us of the many ways in which we have blessed our lives. Guide our hearts and our spirits that we may hear your words and our souls may be stirred into active service to your people. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able and then let us sing together. With a screen as the dear we will sing together. <laughs>
time for scripture reading. So friends, would you stand as you are able? And today's scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Let me read it for you. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the ship, sees the wolf coming and leaves the ship and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the ship. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the ship. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And this is children's message. So please come forward. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Yes. So today, uh, let us think, talk about the shepherd. Have you heard the word shepherd? Who is a shepherd? What does they do? What's their job? They take care of sheep. They take care for their sheep. Yes, right. So, for example, at home, whenever you are in need of something, when you are hungry, when you are sick, is there anyone who takes care of you at home? Parents. Yeah, your parents, yes. Or your siblings. How about at school? So when you are in need, oh, you don't you don't know how to read a certain thing, and then you would like to uh, get through any books. Do you have any help? Is there anyone care for you? Yeah, teachers take care of you. That's what the shepherd does for the sheep. In the same way, uh, the Gospel of John it says Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. So did you know it? Jesus is the good shepherd for you? Yes. So Jesus is someone who cares for you, who protects you, and who guides you and leads you. So you can uh, trust Him. So how are you feeling? Having someone who guides you, who leads you, who cares for you. Thankful. Yeah, thankful. Yes, thankful. What else? Grateful. And we are excited uh, because we have a protector. We have a supporter at home, at school, in general, God takes care of you. So we are thankful that it's a great feeling to have those support, isn't it? Then guys, we give thanks to Jesus. Uh, and then we say, oh Jesus, thank you. Jesus, we are grateful. But there is just one thing Jesus wants you to do. Do you know what it is? Yes, Jesus is willing to be your shepherd. And then Jesus is happy to see you saying thank you to Jesus. But Jesus has one thing that you want to do. What is it? Jesus wants you to take care of his people as Jesus takes care of you. Yes, like at home, yes, your parents and siblings take care of you. But you can also take care of them. School, yes, teachers and friends help you. But you can also take care of them. So Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. But Jesus wants you to say the same thing. I am the good shepherd. So do you believe Jesus is the good shepherd? Then would you be a good shepherd as well? <coughs> then would you follow me to say? I am, I am the good shepherd. Good shepherd. For the people of God. The people of God. Yes. Like Jesus is good shepherd, you are the good shepherd as well. Please remember that. Okay? Okay. Rena, and then Rayleigh, really? Delaney, really? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> all 
Oh, that's your favorite. Good. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our children and thank you for being a good shepherd for our children here. Lord, please bless them, protect them, and guide them. Also, God, please equip them, motivate them, and challenge them to be a good shepherd for your people today. Lord, we know you will guide them and protect them. And we know they will be a good shepherd for your people. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning again. Good morning. Friends, do you believe God is your good shepherd? Yes. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, very good, thankful, and something like that. Then today let us think about how our lives should be looking as we have good shepherd. Yeah, so let us think about it together this morning. <clears throat> Friends, where is the best place that you have ever visited so far? Where is the best place you have ever visited so far? <clears throat> Yes, I know Horton, Kansas is the best place you have ever visited. Yes, except Kansas, what else do you have? Yes, Arizona? <laughs> yes, Arizona? Yes. <clears throat> is there any memorable and great place that you visited? Yes, yes, you may think about it in your mind. That when you recall those places, what else, what else do you remember besides the place itself? What else do you remember besides the place itself? Oh, I visited Burton, Kansas, which was good and great. And I remember something else about Burton, Kansas. What is it? <coughs> Not Burton, Kansas, your best place. <coughs> that you visited. Yes. So what did you do over there? What did you eat? Yeah. It may be food there. It may be food there. Oh, I visited uh, Horton Church and their, their homemade food for Pala was great. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, Sojin and I visited Korea <clears throat> and then uh, so we came back here. So my friends asked me, hey Young, did you enjoy your time in Korea? And I talked about food every time. And my friend, except food, what did you do over there? <laughs> It could be food, yes. Oh, I visited Korea and food was great. I missed it. Then what else, friends? What else? What else? What else do you remember? You visited a best place, a great place. You enjoy the food over there. What else? Don't you also remember the people over there? The people over there? It could be your friends or family with whom you visited together. Oh, it was a great time. We visited a great place with my parents, with my children, with my friends. It was a great time. <clears throat> or it could be the people from the place. From the place. Oh, I made a new friend over there. I visited a gorgeous place and I made a new friend. So friends, if, likewise, if you have a great memory of a certain place, it's probably not just the place itself but also the people whom you visited there together or whom you, meet, whom you met there. Likewise, if you have good people with you, you are joyful where, wherever you visit with them. A good relationship with others makes your experience perfect. Perfect. When I first came to Kansas, it's different than Chicago. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. So my friends from Chicago, hey, yo, are you fine over there, Kansas? <laughs> yeah. Still, some of my friends talk to me, oh, hey, yo, how's Kentucky? Oh, it's not Kentucky, it's Kansas. <laughs> some of them still say, how's Texas? Oh, it's not Texas, it's Kansas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In Kansas, Yes, it's different than Chicago or any other uh, big cities out there. But I have a good people over here. I have a good relationship with the people. That's why I've been enjoying 
having a joy. So a good relationship with others makes your experience perfect, perfect, yes. Then friends, on the other hand, how about you visit a gorgeous place? You spend a lot of money and you visit a great place. But the relationship with your companion is not good. You don't talk to each other. How would you feel like? <laughs> How would you feel like? Yeah. You, you take a plane, business class, and then you, you went to great hotel room. But the relationship with your companion is not good. How would you feel like? You may have no joy, no joy, if the relationship with your companion is not perfect. Because we are, humans are social beings, social beings. The relationship is really important for us. We need and we want a good relationship. Good, friendly and warm relationships give us great joy, great joy. Yes, we would like to visit nice place. We would like to enjoy good food. But we need good friend who can enjoy with me together. together. Yeah, we are not just looking for a good place or food. We are not a robot. <laughs> we want good family or friend who can enjoy those together with me. Likewise, people need care. People need hospitality. People need welcoming from one another. That's a really important thing for us. That's why even in church, we keep saying we need to welcome each other, we need to love one another. That's what we are saying. <coughs> these days, however, these days, however, we are confronted by many incidents and accidents. You may know what I mean. When we watch the TV news, there are many incidents and accidents. There are anger, hatred, and misunderstanding instead of care, love, and understanding. People have a hard time to love and embrace others, it seems like. <clears throat> then friends, what if, what if everyone in the world cares for others like their family and friends? What if everyone in the world cares for others as they treat? Their families and friends. I have family members and I have a close friends. Yes, I am away from them physically, but I care for them with my whole heart. Yes. Uh, today, yeah, today is my mother-in-law's birthday. So, so it's mother's birthday. So uh, we talk to her on uh, FaceTime and everything. We care for them because we love them. Then friends, how about you? Don't you also have some people that you love a lot, you love so much. We care for them with love and genuine heart. Then what if people in the world care for others like their family and friends? It'll be great, why not? It'll be great, it'll be great. Then friends, also what if we care for others as we treat Jesus? Not just as we treat families and friends, but also as we treat Jesus. Let us imagine, uh, as we are worshiping here together, someone open the door and coming and sitting over here, and it is Jesus. How would you feel like? <laughs> I would feel that, Jesus, you are here. Jesus, you preach. I'm not. <laughs> are you sitting over there? What if we treat others as we treat Jesus like this, like this? <clears throat> we know a Bible verse saying, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Whatever you do, work at it as working for the Lord, not for men. This is something we need to remember in any relationships we make today. We make today. Yeah, for example, I, I treat Sojin as I treat Lord sometimes. <laughs> but when, when I'm in not a good mood, yes, I treat her like I treat Sojin. <laughs> yes. But that's what we need to remember. 
whatever we do, whoever we are meeting, we need to treat them as we treat Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and friends, there are many efforts today to make this world a better place. A lot of people, especially children, what's your future dream? I'd like to be a doctor, I'd like to be an author, so that I can contribute to this world. Many people want to make this world a better place. So there are political efforts, there are economic efforts, there are social efforts, cultural efforts, and many other efforts. Those are significant. I believe those are really important things. We need to pay attention uh, and keep going. However, friends, if we forget to work really as working for the Lord, we will not be able to bear fruit. It will be not that effective if we forget about love. Love. Friends, what if we, at your home, your family has a great system? Okay, this is our schedule. At 7 a.m., we will have a breakfast. This time we will do this together. This together, we have a great system. But you don't have to love each other. Is it good family? <laughs> Maybe it's a robotic system, but not a family. Yes. Your love, yes, of course, you need a system in the, in the house. Okay, this is the rule. We need to keep each other. We need to keep for each other. You need a rule and system. Not just at home, church, and any organization. However, your love, your love is the finishing touch that can make those systems bear fruit. So the book of Romans tells us, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. We need a law, we need a rule, we need a system. However, your love in Christ, your love for others, your love like Jesus, is the finishing touch that can make other human efforts bear fruit. Yes, we need those human efforts, but at the same time, we need the love in Jesus Christ. Today's scripture reading reminds us of how great God is, how loving God is, and how faithful God is. He is the good shepherd and we are grateful. We are thankful for he is the good shepherd for us. God, as a good shepherd, protects us and provides us a shelter or a refugee when we are in need. For example, friends, if you have a, how would you feel like if you have a good warranty on your car? On your car, you have a good warrant on your car. I still receive phone calls occasionally from Illinois area. Oh, I'm calling you to talk about your car warranty. We can take care of you. I'm sorry, I'm people here in Kansas who can do it. <laughs> yeah, but there are a lot of scams like that because people need good warranty on their car. Now, friends, how would you feel like if you have good warranty on your car? You feel assured of it because you know whatever situation happened in your car, you know where to call, you know where to ask help for. Oh, I have a warranty I can call the place. You know. If you have good life insurance, you feel like having a good backing. Yes, we cannot predict the future. We just are given our future, our daily lives, and we try our best. But we cannot control or predict the future. Therefore, sometimes life insurance is really helpful for us. Oh, I know I'm, I'm taken care of by the insurance. I gave you take care of my family and myself. We know it. So you feel like you have a good backing in your lives. Then how about God? God is a protector, supporter, and guidance for us much better than those, not better, I cannot even say, incomparable with anything on earth. That's what today's scripture says, our good shepherd laid down his life for us. We are so grateful for that. He doesn't have any expiration date, yes. He doesn't say like, well, hey, I will take care of you for five years. 
for five years you are safe with this condition, okay, in this situation it's your responsibility. God's protection is not like that. He, does, he takes care of us forever. He doesn't have any condition. His care is unconditional love. So that's what today's scripture says. How are you feeling to have a good shepherd in your life? Is it good? Yes. Then can I wrap up my sermon today? <laughs> yes, it's a great thing to have our good shepherd. So we are so thankful to God. Then today, I'd like to invite you to take one step further with this scripture. We just read that God is a good shepherd. We feel good about it. We feel confident and we are assured of it. Then friends, is that it? Is that all? What is next? What is next? Yes, we have a good shepherd. And I preached last Sunday, you are the winner. Just believe me. You have a victory in Jesus. Then what is next? I have a victory. I have a good shepherd. I'm good. Yes, that's it. <laughs> is that the way we live as Christians? The next is to remember that we are created in the image of God, who is a good shepherd. So in other words, you are created in the image of a good shepherd, like God. Therefore, we can be a good shepherd like Jesus for someone else today. Imitating God, we are called to be a good shepherd for someone else. For someone else. I mentioned at the beginning of this message that there are many incidents and accidents happening in the world today. It is so sad to witness those happenings. So we pray to God and we ask for His people. But sometimes we raise a question to God. God, it's so painful to see that people are suffering. Where are you, God? God, what are you doing for them? We don't see you as we see people suffering. God, why are you not helping them right now? They need your help at this moment. We raise a question like this. And it is a very natural thing to raise this kind of question. You may find a lot of biblical figures who raised the same question. How about Abraham? He left his home, but God didn't tell him where to go. God, you told me to leave my home. But God, where do I need to go? <clears throat> yeah. How about Jonah? How about Job? He was a faithful man before God, but without knowing the reason, he had to experience the hardship. How about Jesus' disciples? They were following Jesus, but he was dying on the cross. God, where are you for us now? Where are you for Jesus, our, our teacher now? So it's a very natural thing that we raise that kind of question. Where are you, God? What are you doing? But friends, we have a message from Him to remember. We have a message from God to remember. The book of Acts says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And to the end of the earth. You will be my witnesses, Jesus said. And I will, you will receive the Holy Spirit as well. And you will live as my witness. Friends, are you his witnesses? Are you the witnesses of Jesus Christ? Are you sure? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Believe or not, just trust your pastor. You are the witnesses of Jesus Christ. Believe it. Then, friends, as his witness, what are you doing in the world today? What are we doing? 
as his witnesses. In other words, as good shepherd, what are we doing today? As his witnesses, what can we do to serve his people today? Jesus may want us to deliver the gospel and become his hands and feet for his people as his witnesses. That's why we have Holy Spirit dwelling in us. He wants us to be good shepherd for his people. For that work, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon you, upon us. Friends, you, do you believe the Holy Spirit is in you? Yes, we believe the Holy Spirit is in us. And He protects us. And He is with us to let us to protect others, to embrace others, to love others as well. As well. For that work, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us. Friends, we are grateful for God being our good shepherd. I'm so thankful that I have God in my life. I'm so thankful that I accepted God as my Savior. And God is never leaving us or running away. He's in a certain condition. He doesn't say, oh, that is your responsibility. Oh, I'm not taking care of you. No, God never tells it. He never running away or leaving us alone. So whenever I read this scripture, I am reminded of my experience. I was supposed to be a good shepherd for my sister Young when she was three or let's just say three years old. She just began to walk uh, like children in our church. So I took her outside of the house. That time I was maybe 13, still a young child. But we were playing outside of the house, just in front of the house. But I saw that a dog is coming to us. The dog is, didn't bark. Well, he was just a good, good boy. However, anyway, I was scared of any dog at the time. No matter how big it is, small dog, big dog, no matter. It is just a dog I'm scared of. <laughs> so it was the size of a dog. Not too big, but it was this kind of size. Maybe. Uh, my sister's size of dog. I was surprised. <laughs> my brain stopped to work. <laughs> I just ran away back to home. <laughs> and my mother thought I was coming with my sister, but she didn't find my sister. Young, where is Young? <laughs> she went out, and then she broke the room back into home. I was a hired hand at the time, <laughs> running away, <laughs> leaving my sister alone. And I'm glad God is not the shepherd for us, <laughs> not that type of shepherd for us. He never running away. He never leaving us alone. He always protects us. God is good shepherd for us. That's God, the Good Shepherd, whom we are trusting and following today. Isn't it good that you have that kind of shepherd? Not that me kind of shepherd. <laughs> if I was your shepherd, I would have run away. But we have a Good Shepherd. Then friends, what is next? What is next? Are we following Him? just as his flock. Jesus wants us to continue to follow him, but at some point, he wants us to imitate his care and love for others and be a good shepherd for them. As much as we are grateful for our good shepherd, we also need to be a good shepherd like Jesus for his people, for his people. Yes, we are his sheep, but at some point, you need to grow as a good shepherd like Jesus. Anyway, we will still be his shepherd. However, at some point, you need to be a good shepherd for someone else in the world. Today's scripture, verse 14 says, I am a good shepherd. I know my own, and my own, my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Friends, do you believe that Jesus knows you? Jesus knows you? Here, when Jesus says, I know you, it's not just, oh, I know your name. Not just that type of knowing. It means he cares for you. So when Jesus says, I know your name, I know your personality, I know your identity, it means I care for your name. I care for your identity. I care for your life. That's what Jesus says. I care for your past. I care for your present. I care for your future. That's what Jesus is saying. Then do you believe Jesus knows you in this way? And do you believe in Him? Do you trust in His care? Yes, we do. Then friends, do you know His people, which is your neighbors, as much as you know Jesus? As much as Jesus knows you, yes, Jesus cares for you, then do you care for His people as much as Jesus cares for you? The last verse says, I have received this command from my Father. I have received this command from my Father. Jesus received the command from God the Father to be a good shepherd. For his people. Then, friends, it's not just Jesus who received the, that kind of command. In the same way, we also have a command from God be a good shepherd for each other. For each other. It's not like, hey, in order to be saved, in order to get salvation, you need to be a good shepherd for others. It's not that way. You are already saved by God's grace. And it says, hey, I already gave you my, my spirit. You already have my victory. You have power. I will be with you. Go out and be a good shepherd. This is the way Jesus asked us to be a good shepherd. Hey, I understand sometimes you feel like you are not a good Christian yet. You are not a good person yet. But don't trust yourself. Trust me because I gave you my spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit. You can be a good shepherd for my people, Jesus is saying to you. Friends, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd in today's scripture. And we are thankful for Him. Then let us also remember that we are called by God to be good stewards as well. To be good stewards as well. We need to remember our stewardship for something God entrusted us. This word is God entrusted us. Yes, I've been enjoying living in church personage for five years. You entrusted the personage to me. Then what if your pastor never pay for utilities, <laughs> never care for, never care for personage? In the same way. God wants us to care for something He entrusted us. And it's not just about something. He wants us to care for someone God sent us. God sent us His people to love and care for them. God wants us to be a good shepherd like Jesus for others. Therefore, friends, it's not just Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. We also need to be able to say, I am the good shepherd for the people of God. Today's scripture is not about, oh God, thank you for being our good shepherd. We give it hands to him and we say thank you to him. It's not about that, the, today's scripture. It's the challenge for us. Like I am a good shepherd for you. You also need to be a shepherd for my people until I come again to you. Let me send you my spirit, with the Holy Spirit, be a shepherd for my people, Jesus asks us. 
Then friends, how would you respond to Jesus when he asked him, Have you been a good shepherd for my people? Have you been a good shepherd for my people? I sent you my spirit. I was with you. I gave you my power. Have you been a good shepherd for my people? Are you ready to answer to him? Let us get in, prepare ourselves for that question. I'm going to wrap up my sermon this morning. Uh, friends, we are so grateful to have a good shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for us. Let us be reminded today that we can follow Jesus' way but good shepherd for his people. For those who do not know Jesus yet, for those who haven't read the Bible yet, your lives will be the windows through which they witness and experience the love and care of Jesus. Yes, sometimes even myself think, my, uh, consider myself, oh, I'm, I'm not that good yet. So how about your faith? Well, I'm not a good Christian yet. However, friends, no matter how you feel, for those who haven't read the Bible yet, you are the windows through which they can experience God's love and care. So you need to be ready for that moment. That's the vocation you have as a Christians. Friends, as we try to be a good shepherd for others and care for each other, we will get a glimpse of the heavenly life in God. We say the Lord's Prayer like this, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven when we try to be a good shepherd for each other. So His kingdom come on earth here. Friends, let us experience the kingdom of God, the best place ever. Let us experience together that on earth as well as in heaven by becoming a good shepherd for each other. God has called you to be a good shepherd for your neighbors. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for being our good shepherd. We are so thankful. We are so feeling assured of it. Lord, now, please challenge us, motivate us, inspire us, to think about what is next. We have a victory in you. We have a good shepherd. And please help us to think about what is next. So what? And challenge us and guide us and equip us to be a good shepherd for your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you again for coming and worshiping together. Yes, uh, Bill and Donna, I know you will be leaving uh, again soon, but uh, wherever you are, please stay safe. And remember, you are in our prayers. So uh, thank you for uh, visiting. Okay, friends, would you stand as you are able and let us sing together? We will sing verses 1 and 4.
as I preached last Sunday, please don't forget you have a victory in Jesus. No matter how you feel, that's your feeling. But the fact is that you are the child of God who paid for your life. And you have a good shepherd. You have that power. You have more power than you think. So let us go out to the world in the confidence with Jesus and be a good shepherd for his people today. Jesus will be with you. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.